netjes hoeft te zitten, dan zit ik prima. Nee. <laughs> kunnen jullie, mij, jullie kunnen mij zien en mij horen? Nee, geen zorg. Geen zorg. Ja? Oh. Ik ja? Kunnen, ja? Ja, jullie, nee. jullie kijken een beetje naar mijn schouder daarachter. Als je het niet erg vinden. Nee? Watertje. Iedereen die zwaait moet ook binnenkomen zitten. Ja, kom maar. Kom maar. Het wordt echt heel interessant hier, dus uh, ik zou gewoon komen. Ja, wat mij betreft. Zijn we een beetje goed te verstaan? Kunnen we beginnen? Ja? Kan iedereen het goed horen? Nou, wat mij betreft beginnen we dan, uh, dames en heren. En, uh, and, uh, let's start. Of course, we'll start in English. I hope uh, you didn't mind. I spoke some Dutch to the Dutch people here just before. We'll start with a panel on destination gastronomy um, and what, it's, what it is and what it's about. We'll dive into a little bit deeper later. First of all, if you have questions, Wait until the end. We have a Q&A at the end. So if you want to ask a specific question, just hold that thought and keep it until the end. Um, we'll be about 30, 35 minutes, 30 minutes of, of the panel talking, and then there's room for Q&A. First of all, welcome to everybody. Uh, welcome to the panel at the IHS here in Amsterdam. Hope you're all feeling uh, comfortable here and enjoying your time at, uh, at the Expo. Um, I'm Gijsig Brouwer, for the people who are not so good in Dutch, and you can call me Mr. G, <laughs> because Gijsbrecht is a very hard name to pronounce outside of this small country. Um, first of all, introduce all, the, all of the panel, Laurens, Valerie and Shilo, and will you be so kind to introduce yourself a little bit more? Let's start with Laurens. No problem, Mr. G. Um, I'm Lawrence, I'm the food consultant for um, Just. Just is a hybrid group. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's a hybrid hotel. We do long stay, short stay, we do events. We also have a restaurant, of course. Outside of Just, I have my own catering company, but I focus more on fine dining for secluded small groups. So. And Just is located in? Antwerp and Liege. And Ant more coming. More coming, okay. So two hotels, third coming, all of it in Belgium. Valerie. Yes, um, I'm the co-owner of uh, Op Oost. It's a culinary destination on the island of Texel in the north of the Netherlands. Uh, we have 12 uh, beautiful suites um, and we have a restaurant called the Coke Atelier. And uh, it's all about our uh, sustainable gastronomy uh, with the botanical and Nordic cuisine. Botanical and Nordic cuisine. You have your own garden, your own... Yes. Relations with the, chef, with the farmers? Yes, we have um, an all edible garden. Uh, every year we try to um, make it more uh, sustainable and also a very uh, close uh, connection to all the farmers and uh, local gardeners. Okay, so these are the, the islands in the north of the Netherlands for the people who are not so familiar with, with Holland. And they have the most eastern one, western one, excuse me. Shilo. Um, Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Shilo. Um, I, today I represent um, the, the Set Hotels. The Set Hotels is a uh, hotel group uh, partly owned and an, a small uh, section of management. Um, we operate five hotels and especially the Conservatorium Hotel, which is one of them. Um, I'm responsible. I have a lot of hats, so <laughs> like uh, chef hats. So one chef hat is I'm a regional director for the set hotels, for all these hotels. Um, I'm the executive chef in charge of food and beverage for the Conservatorium Hotel. And inside this hotel, I have um, a restaurant called Taiko, uh, which is an Asian restaurant, uh, cuisine restaurant. And with, with the Taiko, during Corona, we opened one in Dubai. So I'm doing that as well. Okay, thanks, Shilo. So executive chef and running your own label, your own concept yep. as yep. well. Yep. Okay. Okay, well, we, we're talking about destination gastronomy today, which is a very nice term. You can feel the, the, the hotel vibe around it, the travel vibe around it. But what do you guys think of destination gastronomy? What kind of definition or, or feeling do you have with these two terms? Uh, Valerie, you, Tessel is a destination maybe in its own right. How do you see destination gastronomy? 
uh, for our uh, hotel uh, and restaurant, we, uh, we have guests that really come for the total experience. Um, it's a destination itself. So people want to enjoy um, the local food, but also the, the conscious uh, choices we make for them. Uh, reinvent themselves, reconnect with nature again. So for me, as an entrepreneur, it's really every day about reconnecting our guests with nature and themselves by serving uh, really conscious uh, menus for the yeah. in the restaurant. Yeah. So, so the destination for you, or the gastronomy and the destination, it's your hotel itself and the, and the island around it yeah. and the way you, as, as, as uh, your husband as a chef and you as an entrepreneur, transform that into an experience for the guests. Yeah, it's, it's um, a total package. They don't come just for the restaurant. They don't just come for the hotel. Of course, it is possible to book just the hotel room or just um, the restaurant. But uh, our guests, they really want to enjoy the whole destination. Also, by exploring the nature surrounding it, um, by uh, walking around through the island and also picking up the, the wild herbs by foraging and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So a very rural destination. Uh, Shilo, most of your uh, are ventures in are in big cities. Are in big cities, so much more competition. Um, for example, in, in Amsterdam, we kind of created a urban resort uh, because when you're inside the hotel, you have your spa, you have your facilities, you have your brasserie, for example, and then we created a bar and, a thai and an Asian restaurant to become a culinary or gastronomy destination. Um, and the biggest compliment you can have in a hotel, for example, of 129, 30 rooms, is that people actually in the city come to your restaurant. So if we go back like one and a half years in, in, in a forget, forgotten time called <laughs> Corona, when only hotels could operate, uh, only restaurants could operate inside a hotel, our hotel was fully booked because of the restaurant. Yeah. And that was the biggest compliment. So um, the destination and the gastronomy might be also a local destination. So people from the city itself might come. Uh, for, for big hotels, not, not like smaller or uh, on remote areas. Uh, for a city hotel, you have a lot of competition. So everybody who runs hotels, big hotels or uh, with, with large operations, it's really difficult to make in, in an F&B organization in a big hotel profitable. Yeah. So you cannot rely on hotel guests only. For example, in Amsterdam, 30% of my income in food and beverage is related to hotel guests. And if you take then the breakfast, because that's the easy one uh, yeah. away, you have not much left. Yeah. So the, the, the goal is to bring, we, we believe is that if you go to a, to a city or uh, anywhere around the world, you want to go where the locals go. You don't want to go where the tourists go. Uh, would, you would do that first time, you say yeah. it's a tourist trap, but then if you come to the city more and you know people that take you to places you never know before, yeah. and that's what we want to be. You want to be that everybody who's from the neighborhood sits there, have a cup of coffee, have a sushi, uh, have, a, have a lunch, and as a hotel guest or as a foreigner, you think, hey, this is the place. That's, that, is the, that is our way of destination. Very, very interesting uh, idea. So be where the locals are, something you hear quite a bit more. Uh, how does this work out for, for Just, uh, Laurent? Um, in Just, from my opinion, we have more guests from Antwerp itself or from Liège itself. And the people who come to the hotel, they tend to go out because Antwerp is a culinary hotspot at the moment as well. So there's a lot of competition, as Sheila says. But um, I think we offer more for the, um, I mean, we offer for the hotel guests, the same as we offer for the, for the locals. But the hotel, I mean, it's full. The rest one is full, but it's mostly filled with the, the people from the city itself. Not in the hotel, but in the restaurant. Um, and for me itself, like food is a destination. I tend to travel to eat. I think it's the same when people arrive into a big city. They want to check in and they want to leave as fast as possible. It's, a different, it's something totally different than going to your place. Um, I love to go to, to a destination like this. So you go there, you don't have anything in the neighborhood, you just go, you provide everything. Um, and I think it's different in a bigger city because you just, you are there, you're a restaurant also for the locals. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very is interesting because the classic idea for destination gastronomy or hotel F&B is um, we build, a, say, a michelin star restaurant, preferably on top of the hotel, and it will bring in a lot of people. We will raise the prices of the, of yep. the rooms. Yep. And it's a very common Amsterdam uh, way of, <laughs> of running a hotel because um, <laughs> as a hotel uh, with a Michelin star, um, you can ask more for your room rate because it's an added value. How many times you book a hotel as a choice um, because they have a pool? And then you count the times <laughs> you went to that hotel and didn't use the pool. Yeah. So it's, it's, it gives uh, more credibility to, uh, towards, uh, towards a hotel. I have another example um, in, in, in the restaurant I have in Dubai, which is in a Sofitel, which is a 500 uh, bedroom hotel, where you have two restaurants. And these restaurants were kind of chosen to make the hotel famous in the city. So as a marketing tool. It, I think it, uh, it's interesting because you, you have sort of the, uh, the, the three layers, the people that actually might come to maybe one hotel and travel to the hotel, the locals, like you were saying now, Shilo, and the people that maybe come to a place for an overall gastronomic experience. If you go to San Sebastian, or I just was uh, for a, a few weeks in Thailand, you do not go for one restaurant, you go for the whole culinary experience. And then the, re the, the choice of the hotel is different, I guess. Yep. So yeah. if you think from, from the traveler, or from the customer, or from the guest, how, how would they come to just? To just? Um, if, if I, sometimes I find it difficult because I compare myself and I'm not the one to, to compare to a normal customer because I literally travel the world to eat sometimes yeah. book a restaurant without yeah. even having a, a hotel or having a ticket. Start with the restaurant yeah. and look for the so hotel. Look for yeah. the epicenter, yeah. look if you go yeah. to see, for, for a city trip. I think we have so many things pinned on our maps yeah. that the hotel is literally not the most important thing. No. Just, for example, we offer everything in-house. We offer a lot of things so the people can come over and they can also stay there. It's like... It's not as sexy as, as going to Tessel and having like beautiful nature around. We're still yeah. in the city center, but yeah. inside we try to do as much as possible to keep the customers also interested. They don't need to leave anymore. If you enter, yes, you can also stay there. So I think it's, yeah, it really depends because if you go to the city... So you sorry. basically offer both. So you yeah, can so we, bo we offer both. Because what I think it's interesting, if you go to a bigger, say you come to this conference, yeah. you book a hotel, you want to be here, you know, mm. and maybe you want to chill at your room, watch Netflix, eat sushi, get delivery, like, like you know, like you did yesterday. She, uh, Valerie told me before the, for the panel, like, okay, I had to, she had to go to the, the award show yesterday. After that, she wanted to chill out and make sure she was ready for today. And I think many mostly business customers, travelers, have the feeling, okay, the hotel is also like the resort or the place you mentioned, Sheila, like take care of yourself a bit, you know, and you want to, maybe it's the destination is, is different from the, but the gastronomy needs to be right. So um, go yeah. first to Shilo. Shilo, how would you, if someone has come to one of your hotels and you, you advise them as an F&B director, you create in your hotels you create a lot of offerings but there's also a lot of offerings outside how do you make the connection you, um, you, you make the connection in in a hotel uh, as a, firstly you have to take care of them so the meal, that's why we always say that the breakfast is the most important one because the, the breakfast is the last one yeah and it stands for what what you have to offer even for the next visit, yeah, because most of the guests don't stay in your hotel, they, they go around the city. So uh, we, we believe this everything what we cook and serve has to be of the highest quality. Yeah, because if you ask, in our case, 800 euro for a plus for a room, yeah, there's no room for error, because every mistake is, is of course, punished. So in terms of ingredients, in, in terms of offering, Everything has to be of the highest quality, and there, where you, there you create after a couple of years, you create your own style. If you open a new place, you want 
in 200 years' time uh, that they talk about Sacher, Waldorf salad. <laughs> you know, that's what that is always the goal to yeah, create yeah. in hotels that that you become you create your own classic. Yeah, and and, and if it, it be a classic, create a classic for the hotel guests, um, be a destination in its own right. I think, uh, Valerie, when people come to you, there won't be many business guests. It will be people that actually come either to Tesla or to Op Oost in itself. Yeah, the guests that are visiting our um, hotel with the restaurant, they are looking for um, the story behind. So they want to explore it too, because first we opened the restaurant on a different location. It was in the center of the village of our, um, the main village of the island. Um, but we were missing something. Uh, we missed the, the, the total story about how uh, our point of view of gastronomy, the conscious choices you have to make every day uh, to make even a better tomorrow if we want to enjoy, still want to enjoy some ingredients. Uh, so we were looking for a place where we can uh, connect people with their nature again in the, within a hotel and also the, um, the experiences. So we take people into the nature by uh, foraging, uh, picking up the wild herbs and showing them where they can uh, find the oysters or uh, where everything is growing or they can visit the farmers. Um, for us, it's really important to show them how you can make uh, really small choices with a big impact every day. Uh, so people choose our destination because we make the choices for them. So. Of course, you have to take care of them, yeah, and we do good. it. Yeah, and we do it in a different way by making the choices for them, so they know that when they enter our property, there's no wrong choice to be made. Now, I think I think what is really interesting is an hotel used to be focused mostly inside, and maybe the concierge was focused outside, right? And now you basically the the walls of the hotel sort of have disappeared because you work together with the with the farmers, you have a lot of people from the city coming in, you, uh, t you, you have a, uh, an owner that says, okay, we're using Tyco in Dubai to actually reach the people in Dubai. Can you elaborate on that, uh, Shilo? Um, it's finding your way, you know, it's, it's, it's surprising people, yeah? Restaurants and, and, and places become like brands. Yeah, um, every time there's a new restaurant, you will say, oh, have you been there yet? You know, it's like the shopping bag of uh, bucket where list. You're going, the bucket list. And, and loads of the bucket list are, of course, reasons for, because they have nature, they have a restaurant, they, they have food, they have the story, yeah? City hotels, they, most of the times, yeah, say 50%, they just convenience, yeah? like, your uh, experience last night. So the, the trick is to become more and more people finding uh, their way into your restaurants. Yeah, so do you, you have to build on your brand, uh, be a logical place in the city. I like the idea that you actually use the 100, 200 year scope. You know, we want to be there in the future. They want to talk about us. Um, you. Uh, do food in two hotels in uh, or hybrid hotels yeah. in uh, in Belgium. Third one on the way. Uh, you have a very specific view on how to cook. How do you use your view to to stand out actually? So we started in the beginning. It was super difficult. Payroll was super high. Food costs were super high because we had um, a vegan menu and a normal venue. Uh, menu. So we have a tasting menu, it's pretty long, and at a certain point we couldn't handle it anymore. Like the staff was tired, the food waste was getting higher and higher because no one was, was one menu or the other one. So I tried to turn it around and I made a whole vegan menu. So everything is plant based. We add the proteins. So we actually offer something that people are looking for, but also they're not looking for because if you tell someone who loves meat, it's like, yeah, you're gonna eat a vegan menu today. Say, no, really don't wanna have this. So we are trying to um, stand out in a certain way that we can guide the people, we can not teach them. That's not what I wanted to say, but like to let them taste something without even noticing it's a, it's a plant-based menu. Um, and by adding the meat or the fish, they don't even notice. And so in this way, I think that's one of my strengths that, that I learned for myself is to be practical in the kitchen and also that the uh, customers don't really know the difference. And we can stay true to ourselves. Um, 
So yeah, I think that's. Yeah. So, but in a way, it's focused on your on your operations, maybe even on your personnel. But it's, in my opinion, it's also interesting because you reach a, a group of people that say, okay, but it, this is a, a plant-based uh, restaurant. I can eat, follow my menu, or can I can do something good while I'm uh, uh, staying at the hotel. Yeah. Um. Sorry. I'm no, uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> it was more of a conclusion. So the 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 building the brand and and taking and using the the menu is a is 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 a classic way, of course, to uh, to to put a restaurant out there and being plant based and even having extra options is a very, I'd say, contemporary or even modern way of doing this mm. because you take care of your personnel because they only have to do one thing, not yeah. two different menus, and you take care of your of your uh, 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 of your uh, price for 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 buying your all your ingredients, and you have a sort of offering for your for your guests that's very clear. Okay, we are sustainable here, so um, it's about building the brand and 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 standing out. Um, if we look at the current times, uh, uh, plant-based, uh, global foods, um, experience, these are all terms I think we, I picked up in your story so far. Um, but if we look a little bit more ahead, let's say we look into, well, not the future, but what do you see? You, you travel a lot, Shilo has, has, uh, 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 travels a lot, he's going to, he just mentioned to me, he might, he's going to Macau, Hong Kong and Japan again soon. Um, you have a lot of travelers coming to you. What is it? And let's 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 start with you because you're just uh, with Valerie because you're rebuilding your place as it is. So yeah. you are actually looking very much into the future. What is it you think the the customers, the travelers of the future want from a hotel and from a destination? How do you build your restaurant with the future in mind? Uh, if we look at our guests. Uh, now, um, but also for tomorrow, I think the guests, they want to be amazed, like um, they want to reinvent, like the best version of themselves, like they, when they leave your place, they know they did good and they uh, will, um, will be doing better uh, at home. That's why we also take the education for like, not like, a, like a lecture, but education for the, for the guests to show them how they can do it differently at home. So I think uh, the guest of tomorrow wants to visit a place that they didn't know before, but that where they also are a part of the inner circle. We take our guests really serious. We take them in all our steps. Like for now, we have a test team and they are uh, reinventing tastes like the, the sourness or fermentation and stuff like that. And we tell our guests about it and they are also allowed later on when the restaurant is reopened to see it, how it works or even be the first one who can taste it. So um, I think they want to be a part of the inner circle and also doing good for tomorrow. I, I think that's yep. the guest of today and uh, the future guest of, uh, so of our industry. Yeah, being amazed, being in a circle. And being inspired. And being inspired. And yeah. it's interesting because Shilo said, uh, you want to be where the locals are. That also feels a bit like being part of something, right? Absolutely. What do you think as the 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 way forward the way forward is i think the whole hospitality uh, industry is on and cr crossroads uh, the, i think the crossroads will take a while before we go left and right but there will be um, there will be always places like this yeah who are destination places there will always be like to escape yourself and everything but in general hotels will suffer at the moment of lack of staff eh? nobody wants to work in this industry anymore there's still a, a small percentage that uh, um, they will, and they will find their way into these kind of places. Eh? With creativity and opportunities, they, they will create these places. In general, I think all the majority of the hotels, especially city hotels, will soon be only by robots, like check-in, but um, everything with your phone. Yeah. Your, your check-in is with your phone. You open the door of your room with your phone. On your phone, you order an, a, a meal. Uh, by Uber or whatever delivery, uh, delivery. Yeah. Um, these kind of things uh, will be more and more, and not only in small, cool, trendy hotels. No, also in five-star hotels, that that will happen. There will always be 
extremely luxury, where you have the old style of service and everything that will uh, exist, and young people um, with creativity and, and vision will create places like that. So that's why, you know, um, with, with staffing and, and, uh, and the possibilities, it's interesting times, because we, we are changing. Yeah, on the cross. Also with the food, uh, also yeah. with the food. Yeah. The, the, the plant-based, um, all these uh, options of, of different uh, vegetables, it's going to be more and more. When, when I did uh, four years ago, my first time during Hanami, which is like the spring season in Japan, I in, in Taiko always have a, an Asian and um, a Japanese uh, vegetable menu during this time. It outsold, it started outselling uh, meat and fish. Yeah. So these are ch are, are changing. Health type. conscious. Yeah. Health yeah. conscious. Yeah. So the the personnel is a very important one. The employees, the digitization that comes with that, something you notice if you travel a lot, you notice already, especially now still maybe in the lower, but it's going up according to, to Shiloh. Um, Laurens, what do you think are the, the yeah, for the, f the, the, the guest of the future, the hotel of the future, what, what do you see uh, and developments? I think keep reinventing yourself, that's really important because we saw it now having a second location, we thought a copy paste will be easy. No, it was totally different. Um, so we keep to reinventing ourselves because the customers are different on each location. Every, every traveler is different. So you need to always keep in mind what's happening. But as I said, what's really important for me is that the customer is happy, but also the staff. Because the customer normally, a couple of years ago, was like, yeah, I can't eat this. I'm gluten intolerant. I want to have this vegetable. I don't eat green vegetables. Like, the list was so long when people come in, it was like, I can't do this anymore. Like the, the, the staff needs to be happy and the customer needs to be happy as well. So uh, to find a way to make everyone happy, it's, I think that's for me one of, the, one of the most important things. And always stay true, true to yourself. Otherwise you're becoming something that the customer just wants. So, um, yeah. so keep on developing and the balance inside, outside. I think it's really interesting that you, you market your guests, but you also market in a way your stuff and, uh, and and stay true to yourself. Okay, thank you. We have some room for questions. Is there anyone who wants to ask a question to uh, Valerie Schiller or Laurens? Uh, you're all so quiet. I'll, I'll finish off with one question then. Um, um, and I'll start with you, Valerie, because um, you also do the marketing for Opost. And I think we have heard city hotels, rural hotels, um, uh, cheaper hotels, more expensive hotels, creative hotels, boutique hotels. We heard all these different hotels and we heard all the different uh, customers, you know, the business customer, the destination for one place customer, the destination customer for whole of Thailand maybe or, or the whole of, of the Basque area. How do you do marketing for such a changing, um, yeah, changing uh, landscape? In which for your hotel and your restaurant? Um, by keeping it personal. Uh, we also have a lot of digital, digital things and all the systems, but we use it to save time, to spend the time we have left with the guests. So our staff, they, they just want to be with the guests. They don't want to be with the computer or a system or spending their time on that. So we know our guests. We know what's important for them because we talk to them, spend time with them. So it's not just a marketing trick by uh, writing down uh, a quick line or a sales uh, c campaign, but we are selling because we want, we know them what they want. So um, one of the examples is in our restaurant, we don't have a menu. We have a, a poetry. Okay. So it's a poem that describes yeah. the island with yeah. all the, uh, the, the local moments you can enjoy there how the wind is blowing, yeah. how uh, the birds are sounding, or how, what kind of color the, the forest is now. Because we went there. We had the time to go there. You know, you know the island. Yeah, you know the and I really the think in a time with all the digital things, yeah. people are longing for real contact. Yeah. So you know the island, you know the client or the, the guest, yeah. and you form a personal combination. Yeah. Shilo, you, you talked about being a brand in a city, uh, standing up maybe even 
decades from now, how do you see marketing for your for your food places or for your hotels? Um, in the end, I still believe that if you have a ex good experience, yeah, you pass it on, whatever digitally, whatever verbally, yeah, whatever uh, writing about it. So more happy guests yeah. creates more happy guests. So also taking care of the people, actually, like like you said before. Okay. Um, we conclude with you, uh, Laudens. How do you see that your food or your your uh, F&B, uh, the just the restaurant, helps doing the marketing? Um, at the moment, it's quite difficult. We have many uh, um, uh, discussions about it because we have so much things to brand on one Instagram. Yeah. So we have our hotel, we have our long stay, we have our events, we have brunches, we have breakfast, we have uh, we have everything. How can you? take one of those things and, and talk about it. So what we see is we have a lot of people who are coming in and it's only by one picture out of six that we can do it on Instagram. So it's nice to see that the people know about the place and that they can just follow it without having a total, like, um, how, how shall I say it? It's like um, we can't publish too much about no. everything because it's one big brand. Yeah. Uh, and the rest one is just one part of six different things. So, so it's interesting the the balance between the whole brand of Just and all the different uh, functionalities in the in the different hotels. Yeah. Okay, we have one question from the from the audience. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marie de Vries. I'm one of the teachers within Hotel Management School in Leeuwarden. And I'm actually wondering what is the key element we need to teach our students in order to be ready as you are for the future of the hotel, for restaurant guests. Okay, so this is about the next generation, Shilo. We get there anyway. What is the, the key element we should... Nurse them, <laughs> look after them, yeah, inspire them, yeah, showing them the way. Okay, Valerie? Um, well, I think your question was, what do they need from us now? Um, I think they have to um, be true to themselves, what they want to do in their time they have, because like time is the most uh, precious thing you have. So think hard where you want to spend your time. Also during your internship, and uh, don't think about just short term, like, okay, I have an internship just around the corner, I will go there. Just think about where do you want to be later on and and make choices along the way. But I want to be the owner tomorrow. So <laughs> they, they yeah, <laughs> so start with the owner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Laurens, your tip or your key element for the students? I would say do as many things, figure out as many things and go explore. I mean, go eat, go travel, go work at five different places, go do an internship. I mean, I think that's the best way to see and how to learn, talk to people. Go to a place and just ask, how do you do it? So, that's... Uh, thank you, thank you, yes. Um, everybody, thank you very much for, for coming here. I want to thank my panel once more, Valerie, Shilo, and Laurens, and have a good uh, expo today. And, um, well, if there are any questions afterwards, we're still here around for a, a few minutes, so do linger a bit if you like to, and uh, enjoy today. Thanks.